Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to Stocks for Breakfast. We got a massive amount of stuff to talk about today. We're going to map out the entire week. Really, really big economic data this week that you need to know about. But we're going to start out talking about this chart right here and whether or not this chart and one other one is uh, implying impending doom coming up right now. You know, there's a really big thing going on, obviously, right now. Very, very similar to the dot-com boom, right, where uh, valuations, in many people's opinions, are a little bit extended. But I don't really want to talk about valuations because that's so subjective. What I do want to talk about is expectations because there's, there's two ways of reading earnings season and making it super, super simple. <laughs> there is what is supposed to be reported. So in other words, what do... Uh, what do Wall Street analysts believe is going to be the earnings number and the earnings per share number reported? So that's the first expectation. Then the I got a Band-Aid. <laughs> the second expectation is what do they believe going forward? So don't forget, there's two critical pieces of information. You don't necessarily need to read financial statements and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely do if you can. No problem there, right? Uh, but a big thing to remember is that it's super simple to say what's expected from the revenue that just is about to get reported and what is expected going forward. Now we need to remember, and I wanna say good morning to LJ. So LJ knows this, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. Um, when we are buying the stock as an investment, what we are looking for are the future cash flows. So maybe Shay has a, uh, a store, right? So let's say Shay's an entrepreneur and she has a bunch of friends that wanna invest in her company. They're going to look at two things. They're going to say, what has Shea done already? And that gives a little bit of history, right, obviously. But then they're going to ask Shea, well, what do you expect to do going forward? Because that's great what you did in the past. Now we're going to take a look. And if I'm going to give you, if I'm going to take out my wallet <laughs> and give Shea an investment in what she's doing, we need to know what she expects going forward. So we're going to look at competitors, threats, opportunities, all of those things. And that becomes what a lot of people know as guidance. Guidance or outlook is what we're looking for. And that's kind of what's going to tie us in over here into NVIDIA. So I think a lot of people talk about whether it's priced right, what the valuation is and all that kind of stuff. We'll take a look at SMCI in a second. So the question is not a matter of whether AI is here to stay. And we actually got a positive headline about AI from Mr. Doom and Gloom himself, uh, Jamie Dimon. And, and I say that jokingly, obviously. But Jamie Dimon is usually talking about um, crashes and, th and those kinds of things, right? Uh, but we actually end up getting a good headline about AI and how impactful uh, it could potentially be, right? So there's not a question about whether or not AI is here to stay. It's a question of profitability now for the companies going forward that have been touting that they now have the next AI, the next AI, and those kinds of things. So what we're talking about here, and I want to make this super clear, all right? I am not necessarily talking about AI is going anywhere. What we're talking about now are the expectations for the companies that have been reporting double, triple the expectation of what Wall Street was looking for. I personally believe, and I'm sticking to this as strongly as possible, I strongly believe that it's going to be difficult for the next quarter at least, so the next 90 days, and we're going to go over the earnings season and, and some more big economic data that you need to know for this week, I believe it's going to be very hard for them to exceed expectations. So if you could think about expectations were high and they were beat by a mile, specifically by NVIDIA and SMCI, we'll take a look at those two charts, but now the way price action is looking in both of those, and we're going to talk about tape reading here, which is price action and volume, and what type of price action typically leads to follow through versus what kind of price action is suckering in everybody at the last minute, looking for that expectation to not be met, and stock price is most likely going to see a little bit of a decline. Now, that does not mean we won't have opportunity. We will absolutely have opportunity. I'll just give you a little bit of a heads up here on some of the things that we've been looking at uh, in the past. Uh, and this is sector rotation. So when we do our sector rotation, one of the biggest things I want you to take a look at is over here. Look at basic materials and the way that basic materials has traded over the last, I think this is going all the way back to uh, February 21st. So going back about six weeks 
has not had a negative five day rolling momentum from a percentage of stocks since February 21st. So this is the point that I want to get across. We're going to balance the big picture in the market with individual opportunities and rotating with sectors. So obviously there's been two sectors that have just been absolutely lights out on fire. And I hope that you caught them. Number one is energy. And number two is basic materials, what we just showed you. So I think everybody right now knows that gold futures are kind of flying off the shelf right now. And you can see here what kind of move we're having. So now what's, what's super interesting and kind of, um, I want to say validating this context is you start to put the pieces together. And again, we love posted pads here on the show. So make sure you write this down on your posted pads. We are looking for clues. We're not looking for answers. And the traders that are always looking for answers, they're basically looking to say that's that has to happen next. That's not trading in the real world. Trading in the real world is you're building an argument for all of the reasons that you want to be a buyer or a seller. And the more of those reasons that you can stack into that equation, the more conviction you're going to have. Now, a lot of people have uh, questions. What is that? What exactly does that mean? What does it mean that if I have higher conviction or lower conviction based on for this reason and this reason and this reason, I should increase or decrease two things. Now, this is, again, something else you want to write down. The more reasons you have for loving an idea, the economy, earnings season, the uh, job numbers, which came out last week, which were absolutely amazing. And that's another thing we're going to talk about today. All of those things, the big picture of the economy, how many people are working, are interest rates coming down? Have they come down yet, right? All these little things that get put into it, reason one, reason two, reason three, reason four, and I just rattled off a bunch of them. You might want to pause the video and write those down again because they're pretty important. Um, the more of them, you're increasing your conviction in follow through. Because remember, we talk about this a lot on the channel, is that we only accept risk because we believe our edge is present. Now, an edge means... Most of the time, it will follow through in the direction we expect. Sometimes it won't. That's a part of the edge. You have to take both sides of that, right? So the better the edge, the stronger the reasons. And if we get involved where we call the optimal entry, and I'm going to give you a visual of the opposite of the optimal entry in uh, some um, energy stocks. So we can take a look at PSX, for example. This is beyond an optimal entry. It's already gone up to a certain level. So it's past where we would be looking to enter a new trade. So we're letting that pause before we put on a new trade, right? So all of those reasons. Now, that's a mouthful, right? And hopefully you pause these things and, and you take a note. So what does that mean if we have more or less conviction? So I have less conviction in follow through right now. So that means that I can still find plenty of ideas. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I do that in just a second. Um, but the second part of that is as my conviction goes up or down, but let's say it's going down right now where it's more stock specific ideas and sector specific ideas. I, I want you to take a screenshot of this because I think it's important. I just want to show you this one more time. So when we're talking about sector specific ideas. We're looking at the trend of percentage of stocks and whether or not we should have conviction. So this is a good example here in industrials where industrials has been pretty darn strong for a while, right? And probably mostly carried by this bad boy right here. Look at General Electric. Is that just absolutely amazing? So the point I'm making is you can see how healthcare, uh, excuse me, industrials has been pretty rock solid, but we're starting to see some cracks in here where it is not as bullish, very similar to what we started to see over here in healthcare. We see it happen a little bit, and then it manifests into a full-blown turnaround. So essentially what that means is the more of these things that we see trending in the direction, a wider list of stocks, better economic data, positive headlines coming out, that's when we can get in there with a little bit increased position size. Again, I want to give you a visual of what that means. Now, again, everything we're talking about here is for educational purposes, okay? So it's up to you to make the final decision, but I've kind of made it my passion to help you make better decisions. And actually, by the way, I want to show you something that's Super, super cool, which is actually in the context of artificial intelligence. So this week, actually this weekend, we actually launched our chat STP, uh, which a lot of people, you know, we have our private community and our coaching program, but a lot of people just can't commit to the time to being in a program uh, where they got, you know, attend calls and whatnot. 
So what we did for everybody is we took over 100 hours worth of coaching and put it into our own custom built artificial intelligence. I want, I want, if you could just, I want to show you how awesome this is. It's really, really cool. So we basically called it chat STP and it's basically a virtual AI coach. So you can see here all of the topics. So for example, the big things that we're known for are tape reading, order flow, optimal entry, right? Those are the big things. But I think over here, the profit maximizer is probably one of the most important things, which is basically where you learn to hold good trades longer. So I want to show you how this works because it's it's kind of awesome. We're really proud of it. Uh, so these are kind of introductory prompts, right? So you go over here and you click the lightning bolt. And let's say we drop in profit maximizer. Now, this is what's super cool about this and kind of really um, – makes it easier to learn, easier to get quick, profitable quicker. What I love about this, and you can see which coaching call and all the different times, if you click into this, it will literally take you spot in an hour and 10 minutes. Type in the topic and it brings you right to that spot to uh, to where we talk about that particular thing in the video. So why am I telling you this? Because look, I mean, you're, we're on YouTube right now. There's a billion hours worth of video that probably gets posted every single day. Imagine just being able to click a button, type in the topic, and it takes you right to that topic in that spot in the video. So our personal chat, STP, uh, has, as of right now, it's got 100 hours worth of coaching from the last year, year and a half. And we're actually about to add probably another 40 hours worth of video. So if you happen to be somebody who loves the idea of AI and more importantly, loves money <laughs> and learning quicker, uh, there's actually a link below in the video for you to click through and see how to get access to that. So I think it's called Get uh, Get Chat STP or whatever it is. It's in the description below the video. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Um, we're super excited about it and the community is absolutely loving it. So kind of tying that back into the big things for this week. So increasing position size or decreasing, increasing initial profit targets or decreasing. So in other words, we need to read the market and say, should we be going for bigger moves or should we be um, exiting when the stock pauses? Now, I want to give you a little bit of a hint. There are certain market conditions where everything looks great. As I just pointed out, I showed you different conditions where on a pause, you get a push and a pause. During that pause, you need to know what you're planning to do. Is it the kind of market condition where it pushes and pauses and you get excited about adding, looking for that thing to take off again? Or do you see a push and a pause? And because the market is less than perfect, you're going to be more inclined to be booking quicker profits because the market conditions have changed. Now, there's been market conditions recently, sector specific, and I want to show you what that means just one more time where energy stocks and basic material stocks have been stocks that we have been a little bit more aggressive with holding winning trades longer. Obviously, Exxon is one of them. Uh, and you can see the push and the pause, the push and the pause, right? And now we actually broke out. Some of the other stocks that are not necessarily in those sectors or industry groups have been quicker profits. So if you take nothing else out of what I'm about to, you know, what we're covering this week, heading into this week, the market is in what we call a PCOT, which is a potential change of trend. Now, that doesn't mean bearish. What it does mean is we are finding and seeing clues in artificial intelligence stocks, which carried the market higher by themselves, are starting to look less obvious. So when you combine the ugly chart patterns we're seeing in NVIDIA and SMCI right now with the unlikely probability that they will exceed expectations again, that's why artificial intelligence stocks, to me, and the way that we look at things with order flow and tape reading, are not likely to fly to the upside again, which means that we need to shift a little bit. And we could see that already unfolding in our metrics. So if we kind of go back over to the metrics over there and we take a look at technology, look at how technology has changed over here. Uh, and this is going all the way back to January. It was pretty darn good. But look at how much now, look at how much red is creeping in here. And even think about how strong the market has been 
and technology has been uh, less than less than spectacular. So what does that mean, right? That's a mouthful talking about a whole bunch of stuff. It means that what I am doing and what I am coaching our community to do is we need to be very sector specific right now or stock specific. So if we have that power pyramid where the bottom of the pyramid is the foundation amongst everything, which is, is the big picture in the market obvious? So that's the bottom part. And that's the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow Jones. So if we take a look at those three right now, and we'll start out with the S&P 500 by looking at the SPY, you can see that we're kind of stuck in a box right now. We tried to break out to all time highs. We failed. We tried again. We failed. We tried again and we failed. So the language you want to use to yourself right now to say, do I have the market behind me is right now the market is neutral for the last four weeks in the S&P 500. OK, just for right now, it's bullish to neutral. We're not seeing momentum. We're not pushing and pausing. We're at the same price. So that's the big thing you want to get across here. That is the right price right now until one of these two levels, either this continues and we push into new all time highs and earnings season's amazing, or we break down here and the bullish side of the market has less likely follow through. Now, what I think is going to happen is I think that we're going to have a slow kind of slow drift down, but have a lot of sector specific and industry group specific ideas. For example, Google. Google is actually sitting at a pretty nice level right now. It broke out here on reasonable volume over here. Again, not above average. What we'd like to see on these kinds of breakouts, when you get these big nasty candles that, that look amazing, right? Nasty on the good side. You want to see some kind of expansion in volume. You want to say, okay, we're reading the tape. A lot of people got involved at that level. Somebody, a whole bunch of people committed real, real capital. Now I want to see, does it follow through? So we didn't get that. We did not get what we needed to see. We did not get one of these kinds of candles. We got a reasonable one, which is probably why it kind of drifted. Now, I want you to, <laughs> this is kind of a funny thing though. I want you to raise your hand and say, have you ever bought a breakout? That breakout failed. And then three weeks later, it skyrocketed without you, right? I'll raise my hand. I've done that. And more times than I can count. And it's not fun, but this is what will separate you from everybody else who complains and whines like a negative Nancy and say to yourself, OK, great. I really like that idea enough to buy it two weeks ago. That particular trade just didn't follow through. So remember we said about edge. Edge means most of the time it follows through. Sometimes it doesn't. So that happened to be one of the times it didn't. But you need to do what we call a tracking journal. A tracking journal is different from a trading journal. A trading journal is when you're reviewing your progress, you're reviewing, did you flawlessly execute your strategy? Uh, you know, those kinds of things. And then obviously the result as a part of that, right? But a tracking journal are ideas that are interesting, but not necessarily ready for a trade. So for example, a lot of the um, energy stocks now are well beyond what we would call an optimal entry. They've, they've rocketed higher but now we need them to reset an optimal entry. We need them to pause. So we trade the push and we manage the pause, right? So our tracking journal is starting to fill up with basic material stocks that have rocketed looking for a pause. Also um, energy stocks, same thing, right? So there's the trading journal, the tracking journal, which are potential ideas not ready yet. And you know, it's also a good part for, um, for your tracking journal. Uh, I'm sure you run scans every day, right? Like we have tons of scans that we run every day for the community and we give the ideas out. But there's a lot of stocks that meet the criteria, but don't necessarily line up as a good trade. So it might meet moving averages and, you know, percentage gains and all those kinds of things, but they might be up nine days in a row. So it meets the criteria, but it's not a trade. Those are the kinds of ideas that go into your tracking journal. Then you also have stocks that are close to a breakout but not necessarily breaking out yet, but you want to know to set an alert and go back to that list. I actually have one for you right now, uh, which is a really cool one, um, CF. This looks amazing, right? Right back to the breakout level. Big candle on Thursday when the market got smashed on Thursday, by the way. So relative strength, inside candle, right near the breakout. This is amazing. I can't wait to get involved. Wait, this is why it's a tracking journal trade. Look at how many times this stock hit this 86 level and has not been able to get through. 
This is a major wall of resistance. If it finally can, it's got roughly 110 as the next level. But these are the kinds of things that if you go back into your tracking journal, you're like, ah, wait a minute, not yet. This is the kind of situation we wanted to push through that level and pause before we get involved at 86. And I, I could personally tell you uh, this little breakout over here, burst through, burst through, burst. I bought one of those. And it, when it didn't follow through, I took the loss and went to the next trade. But we're kind of sitting there again. You can see it beautifully right here setting up. So this is an idea for a tracking journal trade, not necessarily for a game plan. So the final piece that we're talking about, you got trading, trading journal, tracking journal, and then game plan. Game plan are the ideas that you're looking to put orders into the market now. For example, the Google trade that we were just looking at before, that's a pretty reasonable idea after it reversed on uh, Friday and closed up near the high. Now, it's got to break through that resistance level up there. So let's kind of tie that into the rest of the week in the market right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give you the visual of the stocks that are the predominant artificial intelligence stocks right now that benefited from that big move to the upside. And one of them actually cracked pretty badly last week, which is AMD. Now, there's some other news with China and all those kinds of uh, kind of things. Um, but if you can see what's going on here in AMD, we actually broke down on big volume. After we broke this, we broke this downtrend here. We actually bought that one. It didn't follow through. Then we had another break here, and that one failed again. And then we broke down again. So we have AMD rolling over. We have NVIDIA. That is just, look at this chart. Let me get volume over here. Uh, look at this price action compared to how sloppy and choppy that price action is. Which one of these gives you greater confidence that the move is going to follow through? This is pretty ugly, okay? Now, again, that does not mean short sell. I can't get this across enough. What we are talking about right now is less bullish is not the same thing as bearish. Bearish is Nike right now. Nike actually trending down. That's bearish. That's very different from no longer aggressively bullish. It's a super important thing to, to get across. So the other, so we got AMD, we have NVIDIA and SMCI. Again, look at the difference in this compared to this. This is what is known on Wall Street. And when I had my trading firm in New York City, this was a very important term to understand. Two of them, one was accumulation and one of them was distribution. Accumulation is when a downtrend happens, a stock goes sideways, and you start to see heavy volume during that sideways consolidation. It essentially means that institutions are buying as quietly as possible as people who are still seeing it go down. They're selling, they're buying, they're selling, they're buying, but they're not yet pushing it up yet. Now, you might ask yourself, why are they not pushing it up yet? Well, <laughs> they're sellers. Why would I pay a higher price if sellers are still in there and I can accumulate my position during that box? Now, when does it start to rally out of that accumulation? Well, if this selling dries up, the retail trader dries up the selling, but the institutional still needs another 5 million shares or whatever it happens to be. Now, they have to go out to the market and start paying higher prices. That's when we pop out of that range and we continue to move with pushes and pauses in that direction while they're building their position. Now, the other side of that is, well, how do they get out of that? <laughs> how do they start to dump those shares. Well, they're selling on the way up, which we showed you last week in the market, or maybe it was two weeks ago. So if we take a look at uh, the S&P 500 and we drop volume in there again, you can see that the uh, bigger volume days are on the selling side. Look at that. Look at the size of the volume on the down days compared to the positive days. So now if we kind of work our way over into SMCI, you can actually see that SMCI is not really producing the same kind of price action or volume to the upside. So the key to remember here is continuation or breakouts from those tight consolidations typically leads to follow through. OK, when price action gets sloppy and whippy and choppy, that's basically kind of the end of that existing move. If institutions did not want attention on those stocks. They would not be attracting it <laughs> until they needed to. But that kind of whippy, choppy price action is known as distribution. Now, again, what does that mean for a trade? This is really the part where like, that's great. All this information is amazing. You just confused me, right? What that means is when you go out to the market, and this is a really key part of coaching. 
when you go out to the market, it's more important to know what you're looking for than it is to predict what's going to happen next. Now, bear with me. I want to explain what that means. If you go into the day or the week saying, here's what I expect to happen based on X, Y, and Z, and because it's already happening. So I basically need to say, as long as what I'm looking for is continuing, I'm golden. But if what I'm expecting to happen does not continue, that's how you know to make adjustments. So in other words, let's say the market op- or your favorite stock opens here on Monday and keep it super simple, super high level, but an easy, actionable thing to do. You say that's where it opened on Monday. And we have we have this phrase in our in our community that's called separation. So if that's where it opens on Monday. You could say to yourself, as long as it's above Monday's opening price and positive from last Friday, that's what I want to see. So now you go into the day and the week and you say, I know exactly what I'm looking for. Now I just need to say, is it there? That's what we're not seeing in semiconductor stocks right now. Semiconductor stocks are pushing and pausing and pushing. And it was a nice, tight, easy groove to the upside. The only thing you had to worry about is profits. How much profit am I taking, right? We're not seeing that. So if we go out to the market and say, what do I want to see versus what don't I want to see? We do want to see a nice clean push and a nice clean pause, right? Nice bull flags or pennants, whatever language you want to use in technical analysis. That is not what we're seeing right now. So again, what does that mean? Well, if you remember just a couple of minutes ago, we talked about profit expectations. So when the picture that you're looking for becomes less perfect, so again, here's perfect and we start moving away from perfect. At the same time you are seeing that, less than perfect is the smart time to be reducing your exposure to the market because it's not doing what we want to see. And that's that whippy, ugly type price action. You could still be a buyer. You could still maintain the positions that you have. What you need to determine is how much of a drawdown or exposure in position size do you want to have in less than perfect conditions. So I'm just going to really kind of bring this back to what what I talk about. I've been talking about this for 20 years is trading is just like driving a car. You get on the road and you have to assess the conditions. Same exact thing. You assess the conditions and say, am I stepping on the gas right now or by back and forth, gas break, gas break, gas break, and I go and listen to a podcast. Trading is the same exact thing. Traders, smart people get into trouble in the market when they project what they want to see as opposed to saying, here's what I'm looking for and is it there or not? Big bow on that. You know, keep it as simple to put on a post-it pad. The market conditions are changing. Sectors that are raw materials rising through the roof. Inflation is not coming down at a pace that they want. Jobs market is super hot. The economy is hot. And that means inflation. The odds of inflation are still going to stay up there a little bit. Now, if that is the case, what does that mean for this week? Right. Well, we need to measure inflation and we need to know what the Fed is thinking about that inflation. So now we're going to take a look at that real quick because we're going to map out the week. So earnings season is here, but this is really the big thing that we want to talk about, right? We want to talk about uh, this. Doubts creep in about a Fed rate cut this year. So think about how much the market rallied on the expectation that we were going to have six rate cuts this year. As of right now, it's down to three. So they half of the rate cuts that were expected. Now, what else might affect the Fed's decision to push out not reducing interest rates? Well, number one, the economy's hot. Gross domestic product came in really strong a couple of weeks ago. Um, employment numbers came in almost two third, a third higher than what was expected. Just blew the expectations out of the water last week. Those hotter than expected numbers will tend to keep inflation a little bit higher. So now here's the thing. Now we have more inflation numbers this week coming in to determine, is the Fed going to help the market by lowering interest rates? And that is the economic calendar, which is this. So now this is what you need to mark off this week when you're holding your, let's say your swing trades this week and determining whether or not you are going to be holding into, holding positions into announcements. So the CPI number, right, consumer price index, that's what consumers are paying. 
as a measure of inflation and PPI, producer price index, which is what producers are paying to produce what we're buying. If these numbers come in higher than expected this week, on top of earnings season starting, on top of what we just talked about, about GDP and what we just talked about, the jobs numbers, these higher than expected numbers will probably push the Fed out even further to not lower interest rates. So all of the, so remember how we were talking about before where all of these things, like you want to add this reason, you want to add this reason. The reasons we're adding up right now are very different from the reasons that we started out the first quarter of this year. We were, we were, everything was rosy coming into the beginning of this year and we followed through for a couple of months. Technology was strong. Technology is not strong anymore. The Magnificent Seven is now the Magnificent Four. Apple's nose diving, Tesla's nose diving, right? So the circumstances have changed. We went from step on the gas to your favorite song is playing to now we're in stop and go traffic. There's an accident on the side and it's raining. <laughs> so we need to make adjustments to the kind of risk that is appropriate for the current market conditions. That is the big thing for this week. So Monday and Tuesday, not really any big economic data. We're basically just reading the order flow, reading the tape. Wednesday and Thursday, big economic data coming out with the CPI and PPI. And then at the end of the week, speaking of Jamie Dimon, um, earnings season kicks off with, um, what do you call it, uh, JP Morgan. So we got Delta Airlines scheduled to report, but this is really the big one. When the financials start to kick off earnings season, it's going to be very interesting. We have interest rates staying elevated, so financial companies will probably – maintain what they're doing, but without interest rates coming down and the really high expectations for these tech companies, especially AI companies, to beat that again with interest rates remaining high. Remember, they borrow a lot of money to fund that growth. Boy, it's going to be really, I believe it's going to be very difficult for the market to rocket higher the way it did the first quarter of this year. But I do also believe that we are going to continue to have fantastic sector specific ideas. So I'll just leave you with this. This is really kind of like kind of visualizing what that means. So when we're talking about sector specific ideas and we are looking at, let's say we'll go back to the last month. The S&P 500 has all these individual pockets, technology, financials, communication services. So what our job is to do is while the market conditions are changing, we need to adapt with it. We need to have some idea of dynamically rotating with sectors to find the hottest ideas while the big picture of the market is still kind of working its way uh, through the system. If we covered a lot today, but I, I promised myself, because the market's getting a little bit less obvious, I promised myself coming into, the, into today's Stocks for Breakfast that I wanted to give you a roadmap for the next three months. Now, each week, we'll, as that roadmap unfolds, we'll kind of keep peeling pieces away. So the biggest thing I want to make sure I, I, I get across here is that less bullish is not bearish. If you're going to be looking to bet on the downside in anything or even use some of those stocks as a hedge, make sure those stocks are bearish, not strong stocks rolling over. That's a very important thing. The second thing, as I just showed you before, is make sure that you have some sort of process that tells you, like, like again, like we give to the community every night in our research, that tells you what's going on in the individual sectors, which then will eventually tell you what's going on in individual stocks to take a look at, right? So there's there's a lot going on right now, uh, but that just means you just be smart, just adjust with it instead of being angry. If you got some amazing profits, determine what you wanna do with them now before you're forced to make a decision by the market. Look, if it doesn't go down, fantastic, we're prepared. I'd rather you be prepared for an opportunity that never comes they're not prepared when you need to make that decision. All right. We covered a bunch of stuff today. Uh, if we did a good job for you today, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. I would love. Uh, oh, actually, I want to give you one more one more visual. Take a look at this here. This is the sectors from last week. Just to give you a little bit of a different perspective. Net percentage of stocks positive versus negative for last week's trading. It's like an iceberg. You got all this ugly stuff underneath the water and you got just one sector here, energy kind of popping through the top, right? So very, very uh, different picture there, um, looking, at the, looking at it from a different perspective, from a sector-specific perspective, all right? Man, we covered, we covered a lot of stuff today. So 
Hopefully we did a great job for you today. If this stuff was new to you, go back and watch it. Take notes. It's super important to you. Consistently get a little bit smarter every week. And you look back a month from now, two months, and be like, oh my gosh, how much more do I know? Just because you spent that little bit extra time. That's how I live my life. You can see all the books. I'm going to leave you with a quote today. This is a very important one. How you spend your spare time will dictate how you spend your future. And you can take that to the bank. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Go check out Chat STP. I think you're going to love it. I'll speak to you soon.